is Common Sense Radio. Straightforward and no excuses. This is the Steve Gruber Show. Call me crazy. What I said was perfectly right and spot on accurate. Boy's got a mouth like a cannon, always shooting it all. Stop, 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 stop. 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 I mean, you're way off, Skip. Hey, boy. Yeah, you know, it's not cynical, it's common sense. Pay attention to me when I'm talking to you. Genuine, accountable, and raw. Here is Steve Gruber. All right, my friends, and welcome to it. It's Free For All Friday. In a minute here, we're going to talk about Kim Davis in federal custody for refusing to issue marriage licenses in some remote piece of dirt in Kentucky. We'll get to that. But first, the hotline number, 888 Frank on the line in DeWitt today. Frank, welcome to the program. Good morning, Steve. Uh, you and your program is a breath of fresh air. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I was listening over the the news break, and it was so heartbreaking to hear about that uh, boy that's being tried for murder because he stabbed uh, another uh, boy to death on the, on the playground. And I couldn't help but think, you know, uh, we used to have the Ten Commandments in school and kids could learn about Jesus and things like that. And we didn't have things like that, and uh, we can't do that anymore because the Democrats won't like it. They'll probably push some nice control legislation. Or, hey, don't or laugh, something like Frank. That. Um, I wanted Frank, to, don't uh, laugh. That's been done in England. Um, yeah, I wanted to uh, encourage everybody not to go see any movie done by Quentin Tarantino, because that guy, uh, you want to talk, he's an open advocate of confiscating the firearms. Um, he loves uh, Obama's totalitarian approach. And why would we support somebody who's trying to take away our rights? And he, uh, he is a, uh, I heard an interview, and the guy's definitely a sick mind. All right. Well, he's twisted already. His movies uh, uh, show that. But when they confronted him, they asked him a question because he was talking about the government uh, should confiscate the firearms and about gun violence. And they said, well, what about your movies? They're so horribly violent and coarse and, and brutal. And he got up on his high horse. He says, I know what you're trying to do, and I reject the question, he said. See, it's different for him. Right. They, they take him so away from I, the I, You know, why, why would we want to support a creep like that who wants to, who's trying to take away our rights and who is fully as evil as Obama is himself? Frank, I appreciate you calling uh, anyway, in. There's a question um, for us today. Like I say, you're, you're, you're a courageous person. I, I think it's only a matter of time before the government tries to shut folks like you down. These, these well, Democrats, you know, they don't, you know, they're already putting people in jail uh, who don't want to violate their consciences. So some of you are going to talk about that. But um, it's interesting times we live in, isn't it? Well, it is, Frank, and I greatly appreciate you checking in. Uh, you know, if you're not on a watch list at this point in your life, uh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, uh, which I truly believe. I mean, of course we're on a watch list. We say things that, you know, rub people the wrong way. You know, we don't have the news speak down. We don't rewrite history. We actually tell you what history is and what it means and how it should be applied. It's called, it's a little thing we like to call common sense. Larry on the line now. Larry, welcome to the program. Hey, Larry, you, you ready? Let's do it. What's on your mind? Oh, it's a pleasure to talk to the great Gruber this morning. <laughs> Steve, I had a multitude of things to talk to, and neither of us has time for it. I've seen three movies so far. I went to see Man from Uncle last night, which went back to my childhood. It was okay. Uh, there were some things I wasn't expecting, but it was still pretty good. Previously, okay. I went to see some dopey things. I uh, got some notions from somebody that they were okay. Uh we went to see what it was, Inside Out, which was a, a, an animated thing. That was absolutely the worst movie I think I've ever seen. 
and then Minions, I had low expectations. It's just goofy. But, but it was a, it was an entertaining waste of time. I think I saw, I went to the Getty Drive-In. You were talking with Ron about the Getty Drive-In. I saw well, actually, South that, that's Shane, yeah. No, wait, wait, that? That was, no, no, that was Ron. I was trying to figure out, you know, I, I've never been to a drive-in. I'm so young and fresh and, you know, still fresh out of the box, Larry. I, I, I don't remember yeah, going yeah, to a drive-in. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leave it by the side of the road. <laughs> uh, I saw yeah. South Pacific starring Mitzi Gaynor and Rosano Brazzi at the Getty Drive-In. Come on. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, well. There you have it, yeah. I don't even know. If the, I guess there's the drive. What do you say? That one was is in Muskegon. I don't know where there's. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's in Muskegon, home of some of the best fishing there is. Which is what we ought to be doing today, Larry. There is no question about that. The, the The weather's pretty calm. I'm sitting here in the northern studios, looking across Lake Charlevoix, and it's pretty calm out there. Look, it's it's overcast, but pretty decent day for fishing. Huh? I'll tell you that, Larry. That's where we ought to be. Yeah, and Hillary ought to be in jail today. Well, that's also true. Larry, thank you so much for checking in. You have a great holiday weekend. Thanks. You too. There you have it. It's triple eight nine hundred ninety nine sixty six from all over the state of Michigan, 17 stations strong and growing. I'm told we'll have some announcements of new affiliates here sometime in the next month or about a month from now, I'm told. So, um, you know, spreading the love uh, across Michigan from Marquette to Monroe and all points in between. The, the defiant county clerk in Kentucky sent to jail for contempt of court yesterday after insisting that her conscience would not allow her to follow a federal judge's orders to issue marriage licenses to gay couples. God's moral law conflicts with my job duties. Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis told U.S. District Judge David Bunning, you can't be separated from something that's in your heart and in your soul. Now, some folks like Mike Huckabee says it's clear now that Christianity is illegal in America. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you that um, that that's it's not accurate. Whether you like it or not, the woman is an elected official who has job duties, and and sometimes your job duties are not going to align perfectly with what your conscience may tell you. And if that's the case, you should go ahead and quit your job in this particular case. Because here's the thing: let me let me compare. It. Now hold on, relax, hold on, and listen to me. If somebody was a conscientious objector to you having a concealed pistol license and said, I'm not, you know, I'm just not going to issue a CPL in this township or this county because, it, you know, I don't believe in guns. I believe that gun control should be the law of the land. Do you believe that person should keep their job? And then the answer is, of course you don't. The fact of the matter is these laws, whether you like the way they got there or not, have passed. And in her particular position... She is required to uphold the law and, and, and do her job. She was elected by her constituents to do a particular job, and she is refusing and refusing a federal judge's order to do it. Now, that's not to say she shouldn't um, battle back and try to find an alternative way to fight back against such a law, but refusing to do her job is not the correct path in my estimation. Something for you to think about. Am I right or am I wrong? The phone number is 888 Triple eight nine hundred ninety nine sixty six. It's free for all Friday on the Steve Gruber Show. What are your thoughts? Genuine Michigan common sense on display every day. All right, free for all Friday. And back to the phone lines we go. The Common Sense Hotline, 888 Doug joining from WATT Country in Cadillac. Doug, welcome to the program. Doug, are you there? All righty then. Guess not. I guess Doug, uh, he got he got pulled away. We'll, we'll get back to that in a moment. At any rate, it's Friday. We were talking about this earlier. The Environmental Protection Agency could well leave people here in Michigan in the dark. We're closing nine, count them, nine coal-fired power plants in Michigan by April of 2016, 1.5 gigawatts of power. And now the truth is slowly starting to emerge. The truth is we could easily be facing blackouts, rolling blackouts by this time next year, by May 
of 2016, we could be experiencing rolling blackouts across the grid in Michigan. And, and, you know, now the Senate has exposed the Environmental Protection Agency and a green group in collusion on, on carbon rules. Dr. H. Sterling Burnett here, a research fellow on the Environment, managing editor of the Environment and Climate News. Uh, doctor, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me on. We are already going to face blackouts here in Michigan starting next year because we are eliminating and getting rid of coal-fired power plants here in Michigan. And I guess I don't understand what we're trying to accomplish. I mean, I don't, I don't fear breathing the air in Michigan. The water is wonderful. The air is wonderful. The place is clean and green and terrific for the most part. Uh, what's going on here with these green groups and the EPA and this administration? Well, you know... First off, you're right. Uh, the air and the water is uh, clean in Michigan. It's been uh, on the uptick for five decades now. And uh, it's these rules, the Clean Power Plan that uh, has now been implemented and various other rules that passed uh, under the Obama administration, not passed because it wasn't passed by Congress that were implemented, they're doing nothing to clean up your air. I mean, Carbon dioxide, which the clean power plant is targeting, is not a pollutant. It's naturally occurring gas. We breathe it out. Every time you pop a can of Coke or Pepsi, you release it. It's not toxic. These rules were to fight, you know, to, to, to meet Obama's climate change legacy, and they were developed in collusion, secretly off the books, with green groups. In, the, in his first administration, Several environmental groups, Natural Resource Defense Fund, Sierra Club, they sued the Obama administration to regulate carbon dioxide emissions. And EPA, rather than fighting this suit, they immediately settled. They said, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, but we, we, we don't want this costly fight. We'll, we'll settle. But that was done by political appointees of the Obama administration who, always, who were using the settlement to regulate carbon dioxide emissions, which they What's really the real goal? didn't have the power under the Clean uh, Air Act. You know, what's the real goal here, Doctor? I mean, let's be honest. Uh, where do you live? I'm in Dallas. All right, so you're in Texas. And I've been to Texas a lot. I'm in Texas two or three times every year. Uh, the air in Texas is fine as well. A little bit too hot for my taste many days. But <laughs> the air is fine. Uh, the, the deer population is usually in good shape and just as good a shape when I leave, despite my best efforts. Uh, Michigan is clean and green. I travel a lot. And anybody w could realize if they traveled uh, the United States from uh, Yellowstone National Park to Yosemite to the eastern seaboard, uh, that this country is clean and green and wonderful. So what are they trying to prove? I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't honestly walk around the United States and say, oh, my God, we've got to clean it up because there's poison here. And poison. Do we have our, our hot spots? Sure, we have super fun cleanup sites. We have our areas of concern. But as a general rule... America is a clean, green, wonderful, safe place. So there must be another agenda at work. There, there could be no other explanation. Well, a number of the people that run these groups think that humans are a cancer on the earth, that uh, they want to take us back to a pre-industrial society. Uh, they think we live too large, we, we consume too much. They have this vision of how people ought to live. Now, you know, interestingly, usually it means... The poor are doing too well, that uh, it's not their particular lifestyle they want to change. It's other people's, because they have a vision of how everyone else ought to live. So they want to be, you know, have their, their pristine national parks. And they don't care if the poor can't pay their heating bills or feed themselves, because that's not their concern. And it's they not their, their concern, place. clearly. Yeah, it's and, clear and, because... And, you know, and so what they do, because they can't do this through the front door, they do it through the back door through collusion with, in this case, the Obama administration, the EPA. They, they met off-site, you know, rather than going through the EPA, you know, into the EPA, signing in so it's an official meeting, they call in advance and say, hey, meet me at this coffee shop, and they meet this coffee shop. So it's off the records. Uh, they Go to parties together. It just happened. The EPA guy just happened to show up at the same party. Or sometimes they even helped the EPA uh, administer different uh, agency employees held parties where they invited the environmentalists, and then they made their negotiations there. That way, they don't have to record it. They use, and we've heard this before with the Obama administration, supposedly the most transparent administration in history. 
their employees, contrary to agency and government regs, keep all these private email accounts. And then they do their business through the private email so it can't be tracked. This, this has all happened. This is the new report from the Senate came out detailing all of these illegal or illicit acts by EPA employees trying to get these carbon rates. And it's all because the Obama administration wants to leave this legacy, I guess, of, of See, more the opponent is and more employed people. Apparently, the opponent is capitalism in America, because since the 1970s, when they told us the Earth was going to freeze because no sunlight would get here because it was too polluted, which turned out to be bogus as well, obviously, uh, the, the opponent has always been America consumes too much. Let me give you something to chew on before we leave uh, real quickly. Uh, America has more designated wilderness, enough designated wilderness to cover a place larger than the entire state of California. They have their playground, Doctor, and I appreciate the conversation. Have a great weekend. Thanks for having me on. Keeping you in touch with Michigan and the world. Every time that I look in the mirror, all these lines in my face getting clearer. The past is gone. All right, it is free for all Friday. Yeah, you're trying to do this. If you go to Wikipedia, you can find all these different wilderness areas, you know, outlined. You can find the entire list, right? Some of them are wrong, by the way. But you can find all sorts of things on there. 110 million, 110 million acres of designated wilderness in America. And, and that's not enough. You know, the fact of the matter is the greenies, the lefties, the liberals, your friends and mine... Would run a would run a fence around the entire state of Montana if they had the opportunity, and say that people are evil and it's America's fault. Let's just remind the world: the national park system, for example, that concept, that whole idea of setting aside wilderness for future generations, was created by an act of Congress, March the first, eighteen seventy-two. By who? The United States of America. Thank you very much. Good Lord. Uh, Ulysses S. Grant, president at the time. All right, shifting. I'm just trying to educate you. Go win yourself a beer. It's it's Friday, after all. Uh, shifting gears now. Doug Giles, the founder and editor of ClashDaily.com, um, here to talk about one big hot mess headed to the White House, Huma Abedin and Hillary Clinton. Doug, welcome back to the program. Steve, thanks for having me on. Uh, so tell me, uh, does, does, is this the scandal, seriously, that finally is the undoing of the Clinton machine? Man, I don't know. And uh, the Clintons uh, are a machine. And I tell my, my giddy conservative buddies uh, to, not, to not get too Monda Jovial too quick because, um, you know, this is, this is essentially, you know, just another tricky day for, for Hillary. Um, they've crushed huge opponents of uh, the Clinton evil machinations uh, in the past. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put in past them for them to run roughshod over, uh, over this situation either. <clears throat> However, uh, say she doesn't go to jail, say she doesn't wear county orange, say she doesn't uh, <laughs> hang out in prison pressing license plates with, oh, brother, where art thou type of guy. Uh -huh. um, according to the polls, man, Steve, She's starting to suck worse than an airplane toilet. People do not trust her. They can tell that she's lying. That famous Ed Henry interview where she's like, what, do you, do you want me to wipe my, did I wipe my server clean when she got all bug-eyed and looked like buckwheat when he saw a ghost? Um, the, the public doesn't believe her, man. It looks, she looks like she's lying her haggard, lardy hagfish backside off, according to the mm. public. So I think she's guilty uh, in the general populace's opinion, but um, will she go to prison? I don't know, man. Again, I guarantee, brother, she's probably got all kinds of dirt on whomever is going to be poking into her past and her email gate. Well, you might be forgiven, but i got to be honest with you, the state of Tennessee is just a little bit more hard-nosed. I mean, if we're going to do uh, Old Brother Where Art Thou references, let's get to it, right? 
Exactly. Uh, what a great yeah, movie. Just, no, but, yeah. um, uh, you know, Pierce Morgan thinks she's done. Uh, the Snaggletooth Brit, who doesn't like uh, the Second Amendment, he thinks that that this is it. She's never going to be elected. Uh, that the, this outrageous uh, stuff with her private email account is is the, her swan song. But um, man, I, I just I don't put anything past uh, the Clinton beast. These people are cockroaches. Uh, they survive the apocalypse when nothing else will. And I didn't know uh, Pierce I mean, Morgan was still around. Years of Clinton and all kinds of other uh, trickery and and devilish stuff, man. I think I think she might skate, and that's why I tell again my conservative buddies, man, don't you start getting all sassy and relax in your chair and start smoking that cigar yet because she could very well be in the Oval Office. Well, I, I didn't even know that uh, Pierce Morgan was still around. That's the revelation that I'm going to take away from this conversation. He still exists, and you found him somewhere. Which rock did you turn over? Uh, Steve, I'm here to help, man. Um, he pops up every now and then on the Daily Mail, which I think uh, sought to destroy him, what, 10 years ago when they shipped his his uh, uh, lily white backside over here. But, um, uh, you know, the the thing that, that drives me nuts more than the Hillary stuff, Steve, and I, and I hate to switch uh, uh, tracks on you, is uh, the, the cops getting killed. I don't know if you saw what happened here in Texas. Oh, no question. Yeah, the 27-year-old yeah, yeah, no uh, police officer gagged, tortured, executed, and then uh, the two pieces of crap that uh allegedly killed him, then scrolled it with his blood anti-cop sentiments within his house. This is this is getting... No, oh, I'm nuts. sorry, when did this happen? How many have been shot in the last week or killed? I think it's like eight, you know? Yeah, What? when did this event occur that you're describing to us? Uh, it happened a couple of days ago. It hasn't really, it hadn't really gone... Uh, Crazy newsworthy, but um, uh, John Cardillo so over at ClashDaily dot com, our website. He's got he's got uh, the latest updates on what's going on. I don't know why it's being kept under wraps. Um, it looks like the two culprits are white, uh, but the sentiments uh, are definitely along the lines of the quote unquote Black Lives Matter, pigs in the blanket, fry them like bacon, anti cop death threat sentiments. But there's another cool thing that, uh, or not that that's the cool thing, there's another very interesting and a good thing, rather, Steve, that happened is that this punk who tweeted out, let's kill cops, this, this black piece of crap uh, who tweeted out about killing whites and killing cops had uh, the police department show up at his house and arrest his backside, and now he's uh, has to post a $250,000 bond. And here's what I like about that, is that that, it, that puts all morons on both sides of the aisle, no matter what color you are, on notice that if you start tweeting and Facebook posting death threats about anybody at any place, any time, then the cops could come to your house, grab your ass, and throw you in jail. Uh, you know, it's a frightening world, no, uh, no question, we live in. Uh, and, and you're going over all these things pretty quick and pretty well, Doug. Doug Giles, founder and editor of ClashDaily.com. I'm still looking for that article here on Clash Daily. A lot of interesting articles, to say the least, uh, on, on your on your uh, website. But I can't find the one you were talking about. But I'm going to keep looking for it. Which one? find it here in a moment. About the, the police officer being murdered in his home. Yeah, yeah. Let me uh, scroll down. We got you. Got any mood music that we can um, uh, play while we're we're doing this? It's just, well, it's, we only have just, a few seconds left. But here, here's the fact. Uh, you yeah, know, we're in a, in a place it's today. Cop killers uh, tortured and slaughtered young white cop, and then wrote in his blood. It's John Cardillo. Yeah, I got it. It's on the home yeah, page. It. It's got a picture of the slain officer. This is just this is Charlie Manson type crap. And uh, something's got to be done, and it takes we the people to scream these race baiters into a, a corner, a shame corner, and then us collectively crap on them if they step out of that corner. Yeah, what what concerns me the most is that you, you look at um, uh, the president. He comes out, he talks about Michael Brown. He talks about Eric Michael Garner. Sam's he talks too. about Trayvon Martin. Yeah, he, yeah, he, but he doesn't talk about... Murdered police officers in America. No, Trayvon Martin, Eric Garner, Michael Brown, the list goes, you know, he can have uh, Bo Bergdahl and have a big Rose Garden ceremony, but murdered police officers, nothing. Doug Giles, thanks for the conversation. Thanks, Steve. Doug Giles, founder and editor of ClashDaily.com. We'll be right back on the Steve Gerber Show.
Covering Michigan and the world from his bunker below the bridge, here is Steve Gruber. It's free for all Friday, and I'm t- it's time to uh, start planning your Christmas shopping list, and I've got something here for you. Uh, and I want you to write this down and pay attention to what you're about to hear from Amelia Hamilton. She is the author of Growing Patriots. It's a series of books. Uh, she's from Michigan. Naturally, why wouldn't she be? All great people come from Michigan. Uh, Growing Patriots started as a birthday present for just one little boy. When looking for a book for him, Amelia couldn't find what she wanted to. She wanted a purely patriotic book, so she wrote one. Uh, one Nation Under God, a book for little patriots. And then, of course, he had a sister, so she needed a new one for her, and it has continued to snowball. And it's time to uh, teach kids about America, the greatness of America, from a young age. And I could not agree more with the poison being spewed in our public schools and our college campuses. It's time for Real Foundation. And, Amelia, hats off to you, and welcome to the program. Hi, it's great to be here. So tell us about these books. Tell us about how these books are written, the approach you took, and and where we are. Sure. Well, each book is 1 through 10. The first uh, is a counting book, so it goes from One Nation Under God through 10 Amendments in the Bill of Rights. And the second is Ten Sets to Freedom, and that kind of walks kids through um, the Revolutionary War, starting with the Boston Tea Party. So it just kind of gives kids a framework uh, to understand that this is something special that we have here, and it didn't just happen. No, this experiment in freedom didn't just happen. Mm -hmm. We didn't set the standard for the world by accident. So, um, what what is your? How many books are there now? You started with one, I understand. How many books are there now? And how long have you been doing this? Uh, There are two books now, and the first one came out in 2011. All right. And what has your reception been so far? Well, it's mostly been positive. Um, Parents are really excited to have something to teach their kids at a young age, you know, before they get into school or in the early years of school. Um, you know, just like I said, to give them that, that base of patriotism, just understanding what we've got. Um, you know, there are some people who find patriotism to be a partisan issue, and they, they've sent me some rather interesting hate mail over the years, but, you know, I don't think patriotism is partisan. I think that all kids can, can know what America is about. So you get hate mail... For writing positive books about America. Sure do. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, what kind of hate mail do you possibly, I mean, it doesn't surprise me, it disgusts me, but what kind of hate yeah. mail do you get? Uh, that I'm indoctrinating children or lying to them. and um, some, A lot of it just is completely random. I've gotten a couple saying that I, I'm trying, I want children to have guns, which doesn't make sense at all. You want children what now? To have guns. And I don't really, okay. like, that's not, nothing in there. I mentioned the Bill of Rights, but I don't even specifically mention the Second Amendment, so I don't know where that's coming from. Um, but just mostly it's a lot of, you know, you, you want to brainwash kids, you want to indoctrinate kids. Um, it's very odd that people would consider you know, it's patriotism true. to be... It is true. You do want to indoctrinate them with the <laughs> truth, or inoculate them more accurately, inoculate exactly. them with the truth, and not the perverted view of the world that somehow America is the enemy and America is this bad place that's rooted in racism and, and slavery and all this other nonsense. Uh, I might remind the listeners, America didn't come up with slavery. We inherited it from the British and the French. Mm-hmm. We got we got rid of it after about two generations. Uh, good for us. Yeah. Uh, but it's the same people that that scream racism that fail to remember that it was the Democrats who fought a civil war to preserve slavery. But that's yeah. a different subject for a different day. <laughs> uh, Amelia, how many? Um, uh, where do you live now? Um, I'm up north in sort of the Traverse City area. I got you. So you've been uh, working on those books here. Uh, what is in your future? What plans do you have for your publishing uh, books in the future? Well, I'm working on a third book now. Um, as my day job, I am a political blogger, so I've been doing a lot of writing with that, but I'm trying to get back to the books. And I've got the third one the third one nearly done. Um, just needs to get illustrated and get out there. And, Do we get a preview? Yep, yeah, and hopefully just, you know, keep going, keep teaching kids what, what America's all about. Yeah, what is this third book about? The Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights, so it's coming mm-hmm. in. Okay, uh, when people yeah. want to find out these books, and it's called the uh, Little Patriot. What's it? What's it called? Growing Patriots. Uh, the Growing Patriot series. Yep, and they're at GrowingPatriots.com or on Amazon. All right, uh, I greatly appreciate them, and I think that you're doing the right thing. And I'm going to get online and order those for my kids today. Great, thanks. 
Amelia Ham- Hamilton, there you have it. Growing Patriots books. You can find them. Uh, Growing Patriots right here in uh, Michigan as well. It's uh, the Steve Gruber Show on a free-for-all Friday. You can go find Growing Patriots books. Uh, Amelia Hamilton is her name again. So you can go ahead and look her up and um, and find some some ways to share this. And it's true. You know, books that are too patriotic are, you know, for the most part, shunned these days, uh, which is incredible. You know, the liberals try to tell you that somehow they are the defenders of freedom of speech and the Constitution and so forth. But the truth, the truth is, these are the same people that are building safe rooms at colleges and universities. So kids that, you know, hear something that might be offensive, they can run to their safe room. What What is this? Is Shane still there? Shane's on the line, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the, this whole notion of safe rooms is the thing that I got to uh, uh, digging through here the other day, that these universities, if somebody says something that offends you, you can run to this safe zone. I mean, when did we start building safe zones because you didn't want to be exposed to a thought or an idea or a concept? We're not sending you to a safe room so you don't get beat up. You're getting sent to a safe room so you don't have to hear something that might offend you or you might not agree with. I mean, talk about creating indoctrination and ignorance. That is the most ridiculous. And so we pay, we, the parents, you and I, pay money for our kids and grandkids to go to college so they can be inoculated against any actual thought. They can just be indoctrinated into here's what you think about this, and here's the answer to this, and here's the answer to this. I find it quite disconcerting that in America that the freedom of thought is the first thing that has become the victim the, the real the real first thing is the victim is, is freedom of thought and expression because, God forbid, you might offend someone. And that's why Amelia Hamilton, uh, growing patriots, I'm sure she gets all sorts of hate mail. Hate mail because she believes in America. Can you imagine? It's free for all Friday. We'll have some final thoughts in just a moment here. We'll be right back. 